today we're testing out two different types of solar panels. They're both rated for 200 watts and they're in type solar panels. So the efficiency is very high but one is shade tolerant and the one in the back is not. And how I have them shaded, it will reduce the output of the back one as much as possible. But keep in mind that there's no diffuse light. If I were to lift the brick or the two by four up, the output of both would greatly increase. But if you shade them like this, the shade tolerant technology works really well. So I wanna see how well it can get. I'm hoping like 90% better or something. So let's see after a day. Fast forward a day later and we finally have some data. So previously we had two solar cells covered and we had a two by four. Now from sunrise to 2 p.m. with the shade tolerant solar panel, it produced 340 watt hours, while the traditional panel only produced 10 watt hours. And that's a substantial difference. If you shade it like this and you shade a complete cell and you do it directly, the difference is incredible. But then I found out something else. If we remove these bricks and we only shade with the two by four, the difference was around 20% because this two by four, even though it's shading a lot, it's never covering an entire cell. And if you move it this way, you still have pretty good output for both panels. You still have an equal amount of reduced output, but again, the traditional panel was fine with this type of shading. You have enough of the cell so it can pass current through. Now, if you block the cells this way, and you cover up an entire cell, the output of this thing drops by like 80 or 90%. So in my test, when we covered up these cells, it dropped the whole panel to practically nothing. Now this panel has bypass diodes in the junction box for the entire panel, but for larger panels, you'll have two, maybe even three strings in a panel. So if I shade it like this, the other one or two strings will keep working and producing power. But in this small panel, it shuts down the entire thing. Something else I learned, is that if you have a bifacial solar panel like this one, if you're shading the front but the back still gets sunshine, it will allow enough current to pass through that one cell that's shaded and increase output for the entire panel. That's why my results before were really good. And this is why it can handle that partial shading. But if you put it on the ground like this, and you have zero bifacial gain, and then you cover up entire cells, and you only have one string of cells, it's gonna drop to nothing. We got practically zero from this panel. And these are good panels. These are high efficiency, high output panels. Also under full irradiance, these both outputted the same amount, which was about 177 to 180. A lot of times though, that one would produce one to two watts more. So maybe that one was lucky, maybe it was a different temperature, something was going on. But these panels are very similar. They have the same amount of bus bars, they have black frames, and they're in type cells. And they look the same, like I think these are the same cells. Now I was surprised that this did not do as much as I thought. It did reduce the output, but it didn't cut it down to zero. So even with the traditional panel, a shadow from like a pole or something is not gonna do much unless again, it shades an entire cell. Now in my last video on shade tolerant solar panels, I said that if you have large leaves and they're large enough to cover an entire solar cell and they're falling on the entire array and your solar panels are laying flat like this, like on an RV or something, then these shade tolerant solar panels are the best thing around. I think it's the only solution for you. But if you have diffuse light and minimal shading from like a tree or something, this technology will not help that much. It's more for a direct shade you have to move your solar panel into the sun to get more output. Now, something I wanna see is data on these solar panels if they're being used on a boat. If you have had this panel and then you had another panel before and you have improvements in output, I wanna see it because sometimes it can be either 99% or sometimes it's 5%. So it really depends on your environment. These different shading situations are hard to figure out. If you have just a couple branches, I don't think it's worth it to spend the extra money on these. It's a very cool technology and sometimes it works works amazingly but you really gotta think about how it's being used. If you have diffuse light and you can connect some bifacial solar panels instead, some of those are half the cost of this. That's a serious difference in money. So I hope you liked the video. It was super fun testing these out all day. And if you have data that disagrees with any of this, a very specific use case that you want me to know about, post it on the forum or leave it in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.